Hey guys, back again. Going to do a little review on this Casco Viso. I've had it for a while, but um, I've been a little bit lazy in uh, in doing the review on it. But uh, let's do a quick rundown. We'll see what's involved in it. Uh, the first thing I'll show you is how quick it boots up. Obviously, turning it off is really easy. It's got this little button here, so you just press it, turn it off. That turns off very quickly, and you just hold this button down at the top, which you can't really see on my left hand, and it boots up almost immediately. Um, this, as a portable two-channel scope, is actually a really fantastic option. Uh, it's very light, quite rugged for what it is, smallish but not small enough that you know you really can't see what you're doing um, very very portable I, I do like it over the usb type scopes because obviously in the workshop the usb type scopes are you know they're excellent but if you're doing stuff in mobile which you know that we have a mobile van for those of you that know us um, a portable scope like this is much better alternative look simple unit little rugged box Two BNC outputs, uh, USB connector, a power port. In the kit, you get the USB connector, so you can obviously download saved files to your um, PC or obviously update the product. You get two leads in the kit. Only one has a uh, alligator clip for the battery terminal because they're both grounded through the actual scope itself. Uh, in regards to the scope software, very simple. There's a little help thing here. Let me just show you. It gives you simple instructions. Introduction, oscilloscope panel, understanding oscilloscope function. Obviously, you probably know all this stuff before you bought this. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't buy a scope anyway. Um, not of this caliber, this, this cost, you know, if you were just starting out and didn't know what you were doing. Um, so we'll just get out of that. Uh, what else is in there? Uh, not really, not really much. Uh, data management, this is obviously where you connect it to the actual PC. Um, settings, it's just got your normal settings. You know, nothing really to, you know, nothing really abnormal there that you really need to, to show. Um, voltmeter, standard voltmeter, two channels. You can see, obviously, you can set these to whatever you like. Um, and you can see two different two different voltages at the same time. Yeah, just a normal multimeter sort of thing. So not really a big deal, but you know, still okay. Good to have, I guess. The lab scope. So this is the general lab scope. Um, this is where you can obviously change scales just by quickly pressing the buttons. There's no actual physical input. Oh, that that's for channel two voltage. Uh, and time base is the bottom one so that's also very easy to do um, obviously you press the help button it gives you uh, a more detailed instruction if you don't know exactly what you're doing or how to use the product um, there's certain uh, setups for time uh, you can obviously set a trigger as well um, pretty standard on most scopes anyway. Uh, look, and obviously if you're starting to do in some of the compression and, and things like that or you want to do measurements, it does have that function as well, 720 degree cursors. So, you know, that's very simple too. And also gives you the extra two cursors that you can do measurements away from the 720, which is good. You know, testing something like um, ignition timing. Uh, when you're comparing ignition timing to actual in cylinder compression. Um, so we can turn that off. And obviously, you know, the saving files. And when you obviously want to record, you just press play. And then obviously you have your signal connected and you'll see what you want to see. And then you stop it. And then you can obviously, you know, look over that from where you saw. We'll get out of that. This is the most impressive part, the first one. If you go into automotive, there you go. You've got presets for everything. Now, the presets are actually valuable because they do have information as well. So if you jump into these and you're not sure exactly what you're looking at, let's go into ABS. 
Let's go to ABS Help. There you go, it gives you a full list of principles of operations, uh, procedures to verify reliability. You know, you can go into those, it gives you a rundown. I mean, that's that's pretty excellent to have in an actual scope when you're out on the road, particularly if, you know, if you had someone semi-inexperienced who, who just wanted that extra top-up of knowledge of exactly what's going on, you probably wouldn't use ABS sensors as a as an example because obviously that's a really basic system that most people should know anyway. Um, but, you know, it's handy on the road as a refresher for the, you know, the other types of items that we have on here so let's go to abs analog and it's already got the preset set up abs digital already got the preset set up obviously all the functions down here they're all the same as the initial one that i showed you so um crank position sensor let's go hall effect so that's all set up ckp help let's have a look procedure for checking the ckp very simple um, typical symptoms of a d defective CKP it's got a lot of informational help in here as well which is really good it's really good to have you know uh, it's even got um, example waveforms so we get a Crankshaft, let's see what else they've got. So they've got coolant temp sensor, they got just a standard hall effect sensor, knock sensor, mass airflow. Now we can go into that, we can go into math hot film, digital, it's already there, math help, working principles. I mean that's that's fantastic to see that there. Let's go general problems with math sensors. Once again, information, help, examples, all there. Now, so let's see what else they've got in case anyone wants to know. O2 sensors, easy. Something that, you know, a lot of people don't really know how to diagnose correctly. Let's go into O2. Let's go, it's got the O2 help in there. Types of oxygen sensors. It's got oscilloscope measurements. All right, let's get out of that. So we got RPM, vehicle speed sensor. Excellent, let's go back to ignition. Let's see, we've got primary and secondary. You know, also awesome. Presets, voltage versus current. Ready to go with two channels. Primary ignition, help. It explains the types of systems. Procedure to verify. Awesome, another example waveform. Diesel, common rail injector, fuel quantity valve, fuel pressure valve, boost pressure sensor. You know, I'm not going to go into all of these, but you can see what the presets are there. Injector type, I mean, they're all available there. Electrical system, relative compression, charging system, battery test, solenoid potentiometer. Communication, CAN bus, CAN bus help. Overall, the presets are great. It gives you a good base for setting up. But at the end of the day, it's not really required if you know what you're doing with the scope. It doesn't take you long to set up the normal lab scope. So, you know, great to have though on the road, quick and easy. Um, it's got example waveforms in certain sections. It's got basic operations in the presets in certain sections. Uh, overall, it's a really good quality tool. It's a decent price, um, good portable scope, and you know it depends what you're using it for. This is great mobile. It's good in the shop, quick and easy. It's great mobile because it's portable, light, standalone tablet. Um, you know, and I'll just show you how things run. We'll go out and we'll do a few tests on some cars. We'll choose a couple of the actual 
presets and we'll test it out and see what comes of it. Um, but look, if oh, I bought mine online, so um, regarding warranty and anything like that, who knows? I might not have any if something does go wrong. But if you're in Australia and you want to buy, I know the car scope or the auto Ditex products are available from Endeavor Tools, who's the auto Ditex distributor in Australia. So Endeavor Tools is in the Eastern States, and uh, I'll put a link in the description to their site. They've got a whole bunch of really cool tools on their site. So if you're looking at anything in particular, uh, great diagnostic tools and you know generic tools as well. So have a look at their site and see if there's anything that interests you on there. Um, in the meantime, we'll go out to some cars and we'll do some tests and see how we go. All right, guys. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to do a cam and crank correlation on this. Now, there is no preset uh, that I know of in here. So, you know, it's a really simple test to do. We know they're five volt sensors, they're Hall effect sensors. So let's just go in here. Um, go into the normal lab scope, we'll bring that down to 10 volts and we'll bring the second channel down to 10 volts we can change the, the trigger, um, actually muck around with the trigger after um, and we can change the time setting after, let's just get it going, let's just start it up and see what happens there you can see, it's working, let's change the time scale so we can get And what you can do if you do want to see a bigger, you just close that. That'll give you a better view. Uh, we'll just stop that. We'll turn the car on. And then we can move that. Uh, All right, that's cam crank correlation done. Yeah, just to show you how simple the um, presets are, let's go into sensors, let's do CMP. We know it's a hall effect, so let's go into that. We can turn channel B off. Already in the presets, we know we're only doing one lead, so obviously that's why it's already off. We'll just start it up, see what happens. There you go. There's a CMP signal. Just bring that down. Let's turn the trigger off. That's with the trigger off. Let's reduce that time. Very good. All right, let's go for a peak hold injector type test. Peak hold injector voltage. So let's go to help. We know that it tells us to put a 10 to 1 attenuator. Um, now what I don't like about this is you don't seem to be able to change it because I don't have a 10 to 1 I've only got a 20 to 1 so I don't think you can actually change that in the preset I'm, try I'm trying everything to change it but it's not working even channel B if I try and turn that on yes I can turn it on but I still can't change I still can't change it which seems a little bit silly to be honest not everybody's got a 10 to 1 lying around everywhere and I don't think I do so let's just do it with a 20 to 1 and see what happens
there we go if we put that trigger to the middle we can see a better waveform let's get that even a little bit higher you can see the control on and off here you can see the little injector pintle hump right there pretty good waveform there so happy with that one all right what we'll do is we'll go try a relative compression test so let's go into electrical system let's go relative compression let's go dc current unsynced now i have got my amp clamp hooked up around the battery negative cable um, we know that i've got an insulin the pressure transducer in number one so pressure is going to be there but it might not be that great uh, because i've mucked around with a few things but pretty simple we choose our amount of cylinders so i know this is a four cylinder car we press play i'll go crank the car for about five or six seconds then i'll stop and come back all right now we're there all we do is press analysis So yeah, that's pretty much it, and that gives you analysis of what your relative compression is. Pretty handy, I guess. I like it. All right, guys, the last test we're going to do is CAN bus. Let's have a quick look. Obviously, if you need CAN bus help, then you can go into the help section. But um, let's just... Oh, I'm going to have to hold this, so... I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see my screen properly. Hopefully, the glare doesn't kill you. Very simple measurements there. Easy as. Done. Now, I just want to tell you a couple of things that I don't like so far. First thing is, I don't know if you saw before, but I showed you that in the presets, you couldn't really change the um, leads in the presets, which I don't know why. I'm hoping they can change that at a later date or, you know, in a software upgrade or something like that because you should be able to change it. Not everyone's going to have 10 to 20, 10 to 1s, 20 to 1s lying everywhere. Um, but, yeah, look, I'm not sure if that's the case or I'm doing it wrong, but I can find that out, so I might revise this. Uh, another thing is I've only been using this for about an hour or so and the battery's almost dead. Now, standby battery voltage is really good. Uh, it seems to hold for a long time, but usage is actually quite high. So I'm not sure, you know, you're probably gonna need an inverter in your mobile van if you're gonna have this portable. Um, overall, very good, I, I do like it. Um, the other thing that I don't like at the moment, uh, which also I may be doing wrong, is the trigger function seems to slow the actual scope down. It almost looks notchy. Another thing I failed to mention is that, from what I can tell, it doesn't look like you can really record. Uh, a few of those samples I brought up before after we logged them, I'll press pause and if you move the screen to go left or right, um, there didn't appear to be anything else on the screen. So once again, I'm actually not sure if I'm doing something wrong there, but I will definitely contact the support and um, see if they can point me in the right direction. And if there's any update to that, I'll put it in the description as I go. A very good scope there's a lot of attachments that come with it if you buy the master kit I didn't buy the master kit I bought the actual scope on its own because I've got a you know basically the master kit components I've already got everything anyway um, but yeah look there's other things that I may do in future a bit of you know a bit of in-depth stuff and a few particular tests um, but for the moment this is the basic review and yeah I ho hopefully you like it guys or if there's anything in particular that you want to talk about or ask me to do if you want to see something uh, please leave a comment and um, I can certainly do that for you thanks for watching